morning. You're watching Bloomberg Quint Live. This is Daybreak and I am Jayesh Khilnani. Along with me is Agam Vakil to take us through the FNO space. But it's Friday morning. Let's have a look at what the trade setup looks like. Uh, if you have a look at the Wall Street action, all three US indices closed positive, uh, approximately 1% uh, each uh, uh, for all of them. Uh, the Dow Jones surged nearly 200 points and this was the sixth trade day of gains for the Dow Jones. Uh, European indices also closed positive except for the FTSE MIB which closed negative about 1%. Uh, Asian shares have in fact rubbed off uh, from the Wall Street action and opened higher with the Nikkei trading about 7 tenths of a percent in the green and the Hang Seng trading about 8 tenths in the green. As far as uh, the SGX Nifty is concerned, uh, we're likely to start off uh, on a strong note. Uh, the SGX is currently trading about 57 points higher and just shy of the 10,800 mark. As far as uh, uh, the uh, ADRs are concerned, most of them close lower uh, with uh, Tata Motors declining nearly 2%. Dr. Reddy is down 1.3% and we had Infosys which closed negative as well with Wipro closing largely unchanged. In terms of the gainers, we had the banking space, HDFC Bank gained more than 1% and we had ICICI Bank along with uh, Vedanta which also managed to close positive. Now if you look at the commodity space, uh, not many queues coming in from that one. Uh, the oil prices are currently trading about uh, flat to little lower. Uh, Brent is in fact trading about one tenth in the red. But this is on the back of a surge uh, for two days in a row. As far as base metals are concerned, uh, no major queues came in from there as well with uh, mixed uh, queues coming in from the individual base metals. So we had aluminium and tin which closed more than 1% lower while we had uh, copper, zinc and lead which managed to eke out gains for themselves. Now as far as gold prices are concerned, we are seeing some bit of downtick after yesterday's surge on account of the dollar index which declined for the second straight day. Uh, now, if you look at uh, the fund flows that we got, uh, the large trend continues. FIS have been sellers and DIS have been buyers. The FIS yesterday sold nearly 365 crores worth of equity, while the DIS bought in nearly 900 crores worth of equity. Uh, for the month itself, the FIS have sold nearly 3,000 crores, while the DIS have pumped in more than 4,000 crores for the month itself. In terms of the key uh, indices that we have, uh, the Nifty Bank, though it closed largely flat, but this was positive because this was the first week closing uh, for this month itself, uh, closed about uh, one tenth in the red. Uh, the real action came in from the Nifty mid cap and the small cap space, which uh, declined nearly 2% each, uh, largely owing to the last two hours of trade that we had. As far as sector losers are concerned, we had Nifty Realty and the Nifty Pharma Index uh, declining in trade uh, to the tune of about 1.8% to 2% on the whole. Uh, in terms of the gainers that we have. Uh, there was one index which gained uh, for the second straight day. That was the Nifty Energy Index closed about three tenths of a percent in the green. And if you look at the volatility index, that has in fact surged nearly to 14.43. Yesterday also it closed higher by one percent. And for all days this month, it has uh, gained. Now, uh, what led to the 25 point uh, fall on the Nifty? We had uh, HDFC Bank Reliance, ONGC and Bharti Airtel which contributed uh, positive to the Nifty's contribution and we had uh, TCS, ITC, LNT and Tata Motors which actually contributed 52 points. Overall, the Nifty declined about 20-25 uh, points on the whole. Uh, but Agam, what can we expect uh, from the FNO space? Sure, Jayesh, we did see the Nifty come off by as much as 25 points but still holding on to 10 1700 very little change when it comes to the nifty open interest but the nifty bank open interest however did see a decline in op open interest by as much as seven percent uh, the wicks of course continue to inch up uh, uh, by a notch uh, up 1% now at 14.4 unexpected lines. Uh, what we also saw was uh, changes and a little more writing around the 11,000 call as you can see here the most active option yesterday and more writing in the 10,700 put so kind of a base shifting upwards. Uh, moving in uh, we are looking at just dial uh, which has moved out of the uh, FNO band as we had flagged off yesterday and uh, we're keeping an eye on a few stocks which were declining in trade of course Indian Bank was one of them severe weakness coming in there. Federal Bank was the other, which also <coughs> declined by, by, by quite a bit. And GSPL, uh, well, it declined, but we also saw an unwinding in its open interest. So we did see some fre uh, fresh longs unwind coming in as far as GSPL is concerned. So these are some of the stocks we can watch out for uh, than <coughs> our, our, um, well, our benchmark indices. But now let's go across to Paul and for of Bloomberg for all the international headlines.
President Trump says he'll meet North Korean leader Kim Jong-un on June the 12th in Singapore. He tweeted that they both try to make it a special moment for world peace. Singapore has security partnerships with the US, a North Korean embassy and strong ties with China. Trump made the announcement after greeting three US citizens freed by North Korea, praising their release as a conciliatory gesture by Kim. President Trump says five top leaders of the so-called Islamic State group have been captured. The New York Times says the men were caught in a complex cross-border operation carried out by the Iraqi and U.S. intelligence. The report cites Iraqi officials saying the three-month operation tracked the group in hiding in Syria and Turkey. One is described as a top aide to IS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Goldman Sachs says the, pl the pace of wage growth is lower than in previous decades because productivity gains have been weaker. Chief economist Jan Hatzius told Bloomberg the speed limit for hourly wage growth used to be about 4%, but is now about 3 He also says the short-term risk of recession is low. I don't think we're at the end of the expansion. In fact, I think risk of recession in 2018, 2019 is, uh, is pretty low still. On the demand side, we're still getting a, a good boost from fiscal policy in particular. We think that probably contributes something like three quarters of a percentage point to growth. Uh, and on the supply side, while clearly we're, we're moving into a labor shortage environment, I don't think we're, we're far beyond full employment. The dam burst in southwest Kenya has killed at least 44 people, with dozens more still missing. Water rushing from the Patel Dam swept away hundreds of nearby homes. Kenyan authorities say the flooding since the start of the rainy season in March has killed about 170 people and displaced more than 220,000. Almost three quarters of Kenya's 47 counties have been affected. Global news 24 hours a day on air and at TikTok on Twitter, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Paul Allen. This is Bloomberg. Uh, the president is uh, upending decades of, of uh, the pra diplomatic practice for these sorts of things, where in the past there would be weeks and perhaps even months of discussion among lower level officials uh, to uh, hammer out the details with the leaders coming in at the end to, to sweep things up and, and sign it. In this case, uh, Kim and uh, Trump will be going in essentially at the beginning. Uh, there's been a little pre-work done, but uh, they're going in, and it's just going to be, uh, looks like at this point, just one day uh, to be uh, talking to each other to meet uh which doesn't suggest that there'll be extended negotiations. Uh, and the U.S. has really said more what it's not going to be rather than what it will be. Uh, that's chiefly the uh, Secretary of State uh, Pompeo said that uh, the U.S. is not interested in giving some sort of incremental sanctions release relief to the North Koreans, uh, and they want the North Koreans to make the first move. Broadly, the, the, the main goal is to, for North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons. Uh, but there is a really a long way from here to there uh, that would require inspections and a sort of an opening to the rest of the world that uh, heretofore North Korea hasn't been uh, uh, amenable to, and they would require quite a bit of work going uh, going forward in terms of accounting for what they have and how it's disposed of. Uh, there is uh, a real question here whether the uh, North Koreans would require some sort of or demand some sort of sanction relief for that or uh, how far they would have mm. to go before that you uh, act to give sanctions relief. To local equity market stock of the day's emphasis, good set of numbers reported by the company. Operational performance has been more than what we were anticipating. Uh, in top line growth, we're looking at a 5% growth there at a number of 1,744 crore as compared to 1,661 crore. Now, the estimates that we were working were pretty much in line of 1,690 crore kind of a number. In terms of net profit, we saw an 11% jump there to a number of 238 crore as compared to nearly 217 crore that we've seen in the previous quarter. Uh, this is also higher than the estimate of 220-odd crore. In terms of EBIT, that's where the beat came in from. Now, we were working with a number of around 220 crore, but then the performance came in at 292 crore as compared to 257 crore sequentially. Margins somehow remain stable to around 16.8% from 15.5% growth that we saw in the previous quarter. Now, what has led to uh, a good set of numbers is obviously the kind of um, beat that we've seen on the operational front. But 
before that, I'd like to address the kind of dividend uh, that the company has given. Uh, it's almost a 200% dividend that the board has recommended. Uh, it has recommended a dividend of around uh, rupees 20 per share. Um, in, if you see what goes behind the making of the numbers, with the strong growth led in HPA and DXC uh, channel business, which rose by as much as 9% and 3% sequentially, respectively, had led to a strong uh, show on the top line front. This, uh, besides your uh, cost optimization measures, that is the stable uh, cost that we've seen across the, 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 the fixed division is what has led to a good bottom line performance. If you look at the guidance, that's a, a bullish commentary coming in from there as well. The direct core and the HP DXC channel is expected to grow uh, above the industry average. Besides that, within the direct international business, uh, decline in digital risk weighed on the FI18 performance. However, that is expected to ebb and stabilize going forward in FI19. And also importantly, the company has revised its EBIT margins uh, outlook uh, to 15 to 17 percent from 14 to 16 percent it had guided earlier. Shifting focus to the commodity space, starting off with oil prices, uh, currently trading uh, flat to marginally lower. Brent is currently trading about uh, one-tenth uh, in the red. But remember that this is on the back of uh, a surge on two days that we had uh, before this. Uh, now, largely the factors that are contributing to this is uh, uh, the traders are actually eyeing the Syria conflict and the Iran deal is uh, is at the focus. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, oil prices dip as much as eight-tenths of a percent uh, before they closed uh, marginally higher. Now, there's plenty of bullish commentary coming in from the brokerage houses. We have one from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, which says that uh, the you know, oil prices at $100 per barrel uh, is a realistic possibility going into next year. Uh, however, as far as uh, base metals are concerned, we saw the index uh, uh, close higher for the second straight day. Uh, the LME base metal index, in fact, surged uh, uh, four-tenths of a percent. But as far as individual base metals are concerned, uh, we had a mixed close for all of them. Uh, copper, which uh, rose uh, for the uh, to a two-week high on account of a decline in the inventory. Now, copper inventory came down 2.7%, and this is a 15th straight day of an inventory decline for copper, so that's a positive for copper prices. Aluminum prices uh, are down about 1.3% and snapped its uh, three-day winning streak. Now, nickel and tin uh, declined in trade while we had uh, lead and zinc, which uh, uh, gain in trade. Uh, as far as the Shanghai Futures Exchange are concerned, uh, one metal stands out over there, which is uh, Shanghai Steel. That is trading about 1.6% higher, uh, so watch out for that one as well. As far as uh, uh, precious metals are concerned, we saw some bit of uptick come about for gold prices on account of uh, the dollar index, which uh, closed lower for the second straight day. Well, amongst the stocks that we are tracking is PC Jewelers, where the board has approved a buyback of uh, shares aggregating uh, not uh, more than 424 crores. So the buyback price has been set at 350, crore, uh, 350 rupees as compared to the market price of 209 rupees. And the promoters will not be participating in the buyback. You could see a big up move on this one. Watch out for this name. Dana Bhatt, you also had a couple of uh, companies which reported a very strong set of numbers after market hours starting off with the G1 financial where the net interest income jumped by 64%, net profit grew multifold to 65 crores. Uh, also sizable improvement as far as the asset quality numbers are concerned because the gross NPA number uh, fell from 4.24% in December to 3.60% and you also had a very strong AUM and disbursements growth coming in, so could quarter for uh, G1 financial. Uh, that apart with also strong numbers coming in from Nestle, well, uh, while net sales rose by about 10 to 11 percent uh, it put up a very strong operational show because EBITDA grew uh, by a lot more uh, that's by about 35 percent so EBITDA margins also jumped by nearly 500 basis points and you could see that impact on the net profit up 38 percent Shankara Building Products was uh, the other one which came out with a good set of numbers, revenue growth of 27%, uh, net profit growth of 16%. EBITDA also grew by about 20%, so again, good set of numbers. What did not uh, do well in, uh, in terms of the numbers post-market hours yesterday is uh, Union Bank of India. Now, the net interest income for that um, bank 
actually came down by 8.1 percent. It reported a net loss of 2,500 crores, third consecutive quarter at net loss, and a big jump in gross NPA number to about 15.7 percent. Also, a couple of interesting bulk deals. First is Infibeam, where Nomura Singapore bought 0.6 percent stake yesterday, and then you also have uh, Magma FinCorp. Now, we did see about a 5.48 percent equity change hands in trade yesterday. So, interesting to look at the names of the buyers. Amansa Holdings bought 1.4 percent. You have um, Goldman Sachs Asia Growth Fund, which bought 0.8 percent stake, and then domestic mutual funds like HDFC, uh, uh, HTC Standard Life the Insurance Company, and you have the domestic mutual fund Reliance Capital, which also bought some stake. Uh, who are the sellers? One is a KKR entity, which sold 1.6 percent stake, and Zen Mauritius, which is a very big investor in this company, they sold 3.9 percent stake. So some partial uh, stake uh, sale coming in over there. So let's see if we see uh, some reaction on this counter today as well. Okay, the big deal finally done. Uh, Fortis Healthcare has selected Hero Munjil Combine uh, as uh, uh, to the shareholders as the best bid that they have received till now. So that's uh, the broad headline. What they're looking to do is infuse 1800 crores into the company. 800 crores will be via preferential issue at 167 rupees per share and another 1000 crore via warrants at uh, almost 176 per share. The warrants can be converted within 18 months and the press release says that they're looking to convert the warrants uh, within the next four months. Uh, all the funds come into the company. So it's a 1,050 crore upfront payment because 800 crores uh, will be the upfront uh, preferential issue plus 25 percent of the 1,000 crore that they're looking as far as warrants is concerned. So this is the deal that they have given. Now there are two independent in in directors that will be appointed, Savina as well as Rohit Bashin. Both of them will be uh, appointed uh, as per the press release given by Fortis yesterday. Now there is no mention of it but uh, uh, there was uh, when the offer was given on 1st May, uh, the Burman uh, uh, Munjil uh, team had indicated that they're looking to divest stake in SRL to fund the further, further buy of the RHT stake, else the rights issue will happen for an RHT stake sale. Uh, this does not this is not mentioned in the RH, in, in the press release, but we need to find out from the management today. In terms of uh, where the money will go, employees, dues, as well as creditors, it's the immediate uh, uh, you know where funds will be required. So that is where they're saying. Now, in terms of what this means for the shareholders of Fortis uh, Healthcare, uh, first of all, it's beneficial given the fact that there is limited dilution of shareholding and if further a rights issue comes in that's positive for uh, the minority shareholder direct upfront cash for working capital requirements which Fort is currently urgently need so that is another probably reason why this was selected uh, change of promoters without disruption of the business there's no merger there's no acquisition uh, there is no uh, you know change as far as SRL is concerned value lock unlocking in SRL via competitive bids they want to sell out SRL they want to focus only on the hospital business so that's something that is possible Positive. Shareholder participation via the rights issue will ensure that, you know, the hash stake in the company also has a chance to go up significantly. So that, that's what's being offered. Uh, what will happen is currently they own 3% stake in the combined entity. Deal will make them the largest shareholders in the company. Currently, Yes Bank with a stake of over 15% is the largest shareholder in the company. So that's what's uh, coming out. Uh, the strategies that they have highlighted for the entire deal strong communication internally so that the morale is boosted for uh, the internal staff retaining key medical practitioners is something that they want to do uh, so that that uh, that remains and they want to focus only on the hospital business they want to divest out srl so that's uh, what they have said as far as their strategy is concerned but more details will come in in the press conference post 10 o'clock uh, by both the hero group as well as uh, uh, fortis healthcare today well, it was a steady quarter for Titan Company. While it did miss revenue estimates, uh, its strong operational beat led to profitability coming in line, starting off with your top line growth. That's where we saw about come around 12%. Uh, we have seen a substantial expansion in margins to around 11.6% versus 7.7%. Consequently, profits went up by as much as 40% year on year. Uh, well, so watch, while the watches segment uh, did have a subdued, uh, well, sh should I say, decline of as much as 2% in terms of the revenues. The jewelry segment did very well and this was largely on account of the studded collection. Uh, we have seen good growth when it comes to its uh, wedding segment, especially on the back of uh, the, the season gone by in January and that's the reason why we've seen that big boost, especially on the back of uh, the premium collection Padmavati brand uh, uh, collection. That's where we've seen an uptick uh, when it comes to margins. Uh, watches on the other hand remain subdued and inconsistent. Uh, we 
we'll have to wait and watch whether or not that catches up. But for as, as far as the management is concerned for now, uh, they have guided for revenues of as much as 40,000 crores coming in you know, when it comes to jewelry segment. Um, well, and this is of course uh, five years down the line. On the whole, steady quarter, a miss on revenues, but operationally uh, a beat. So Asian Paints reported an inline set of numbers. Their revenues have adjusted for excise have grown by as much as 14.5% to 4,483 crores versus analyst expectations of about 4,400 crores. The net profit have come in slightly lower at about 481 crores uh, versus an expectation of about 542 crores. EBITDA is up as much as 18.5% while margins have seen a slight improvement of as much as 60 basis points coming in at about 18.7%. Uh, now the now, higher raw material prices, they have had a significant bearing on their gross margins, which have fallen by as much as 600 basis points. Uh, raw material cost has gone up by as much as 11.5% to 2,300 crore rupees in the fourth quarter, and as a percentage of net sales now account for more than 50%. Uh, that apart, their bottom line, uh, that came in significantly lower. This was uh, mainly because of two reasons. One uh, being, uh, being that their tax expenses have gone up significantly, and also a lower other income element. Uh, now, their effective tax rate has gone up by as much as 500 basis points from almost 32% to 37% in the fourth quarter, as well as their other income, which has halved uh, from 70 crores in the base quarter to almost 39 crores. Uh, that apart, uh, the decorative paint business has posted strong double-digit volume growth. Uh, now, we were working with a mid to, to a high single-digit uh, volume growth number in this segment, so this would be a big positive for the stock. EBITDA margins, they have been cushioned by the price hikes announced by the management. Uh, management uh, also said that they are seeing a strong uh, demand growth in the automotive and industrial paint pain segment and that apart uh, their home improvement business posted a strong 14 percent uh, revenue growth in the fourth quarter. However, uh, it still continues to remain a bit negative. Let's get your sense of uh, which stocks to keep on an eye on uh, based on yesterday's delivery buying and selling. The first stock that we have on the list is Federal Bank. Now that sh saw a sharp fall of uh, more than 11% uh, after it posted earnings and it saw a delivery selling of nearly 400 crores. The delivery volume surged uh, more than three times at four and a half crore shares as compared to its five day average and the total volume also surged more than three times at nearly 13 and a half crore shares as compared to its five day average. Second stock to watch out for that would be PVR. Now this was the interesting one because it fell two and a half percent while it saw delivery selling of 60 crores but the delivery volume surged at 200 percent while the total volume surged just about uh, seven percent. Now if you look at the third stock uh, and the final one uh, that's Imami uh, that was down about uh, two two and a half percent and that too saw delivery selling of nearly 51 crores. The delivery volume surged 160 percent at nearly five lakh shares as compared to its five day average and the total mo volume just about doubled at about uh, six lakh shares as compared to its five-day average well there's lots to look forward to in the realm of politics business and the markets you'll find all of that right here on Bloomberg Quint live there are also several stories that are currently up on the website and that you can read first up the panel headed by the cabinet secretary has interviewed three senior bureaucrats and six bankers for the post of RBI deputy governor which has been vacant since SS Mundra retired in July and a meeting of the Supreme Court Collegium is likely to be held today to debate reconsidering the name of Uttarakhand Chief Justice K.M. Joseph for elevation to the Apex Court. This after his nomination was returned by the centre. All right, that's all you need to know going into trade today. Up next is Indian Open and we'll take you through market open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quint.